Hi, everybody. My apologies for not being able to be with you as planned this afternoon. As you may have heard, we announced formally on October 31st that Henry Ford Health System and Beaumont Health System have signed a letter of intent to create a new organization. These two organizations will combine all assets, liabilities, and operations into a new $6.4 billion not-for-profit organization. Our goal is to create a new high-value model for healthcare delivery that will integrate 10 hospitals, 200 patient care sites, and many other assets. Needless to say, this has created new time constraints for me and the rest of the senior executive team as we enter our due diligence period. NCHL has been a valued partner with Henry Ford Health System, and we recognize and applaud its efforts to meet the industry's challenges through developing leadership capable of achieving successful delivery and financing of healthcare services that are safe, effective, patient-centered, timely, efficient, and equitable. My role today is to give you a brief description of our organization. Created in 1915 by Henry Ford, the great innovator and icon of American industry, Henry Ford has remained true to our founder's vision and outside-the-box thinking. We have grown into one of the nation's largest, most diversified, and most successful integrated healthcare systems. We've doubled in size in the last decade from about $2 billion to $4.4 billion in revenues. We've gone from 12,000 team members to over 24,000 team members. And we now have a wonderfully rich pluralistic physician model that includes private practitioners, employed physicians, and 1,300 members of the Henry Ford Medical Group that serve across the entire Tri-County area in Southeast Michigan, including Detroit, which is one of the most economically depressed areas in the country. In the midst of this challenging environment, we have been able to achieve high quality, growth, and overall success. In the city of Detroit, Half the population is either on Medicaid or uninsured. Providing quality health care in southeastern Michigan is not easy, but it's a key differentiator for us in that we believe we can do it. Henry Ford Health System operates over 140 sites at which we serve over 1 million patients a year and many more through our collaborative efforts. These sites include five hospitals, 33 ambulatory care sites, affiliated physician practices, a research and education component, HAP, which stands for Health Alliance Plan, with coverage for over 600,000 members, and 91 community care operations and retail operations. Our strategic goals are centered on our seven pillars of excellence, which include people, service, quality and safety, growth, research and education, community, and finance. Henry Ford's strategic priorities for 2013 include Project Helios, a massive undertaking to integrate, standardize, and align our clinical and administrative processes across system operations to transform our healthcare delivery system. Patient and employee engagement continue to be an area of intense focus. Lastly, we believe sustainability is achieved through our continued attention to workforce culture, quality culture, and a relentless focus on safety, innovation, accountability for results, succession planning, and leadership development. Leadership is a key differentiator for Henry Ford as we were recognized by the Malcolm Baldridge Examiners and the Malcolm Baldridge National Quality Award we received in 2011. This brings me to the focus of our presentation today. I would like to introduce Henry Ford Health System Senior Vice President and Chief Human Resource Officer, Kathy Oswald. Kathy will provide you an overview of our advanced leadership academies that support Henry Ford's robust leadership development culture. Once again, I wish I could be with you today. I hope you enjoy the presentation and the rest of the conference. Sometimes you have to figure out best ways to do things, and uh, that was the best we could do with Bob today, unfortunately. And as he said, we're a little busy. Uh, things have changed dramatically in the last couple of weeks, and, and we're continuing to go through that journey. Um, what I wanted to talk about, though, is we talk about what we've really done at Henry Ford Health System in the area of leadership development. It really was hooked to our Baldrige journey. And as Bob mentioned, in 2011, we were honored by receiving that Baldrige Award. As we looked at what we were doing in the HR organization and in the area of development for our leaders succession planning, what we put together here is what we call our racetrack. And it really started with identifying 
the competencies, the core competencies that we felt were important at Henry Ford Health System. Very honestly, prior to going through this journey, we didn't see a competency we didn't like. And so we had many, many throughout the system. We really said, what are those seven critical competencies that are really gonna drive the work that we wanna do at Henry Ford? And we decided to center that around the Baldrige competencies. And we really took those seven competencies and used that as we started this journey. We then said we need a, a consistent performance management process. We didn't have that either, and we really had many, many different processes throughout the system. Now we have 24,000 employees all utilizing the exact same performance management, starting with goal setting at the beginning of the year, mid-years, and, and, um, and year-end reviews. We've also put in calibration sessions so that we really have discussions before we do feedback sessions now, instead of everyone being told they're wonderful and ending up with uh, breaking that system very quickly. And we put in here a succession planning process. So we go through a, um, a process beginning in the summer of identifying each business unit goes through succession planning, identifying successors for all their major um, positions. We then take that from a system perspective and do a collective look at if we have a CNO position at any of our hospitals, who, where's our, our slate of candidates for that? That then goes to the executive cabinet and then uh, our CEO, Nancy, always makes a presentation to the board in December on where we are for our top positions. One of the important parts of that as we talk about our leadership development are the people that really uh, attend our academies are identified through that process. It's a little bit like preaching to the choir as I talk about why it's important. But if you look at, at any survey, we looked at uh, the war on talent with McKinsey. Any of these surveys would tell you that a large portion, in this case 75% respondents say they're chronically short of leadership talent. And the fear is that we're gonna continue to see that. With the baby boomers retiring, over half the baby boomers are saying they're gonna retire in the next five years. Um, failure rate, bringing executives in, there's a lot of studies on that, but the, probably the, the most prevalent would say that four out of seven executives brought in from outside fail in the, in the first five years. And the turnover at the sea level is still very, very high, 53% between uh, 2001 and 2007. So really that idea of how do you grow um, your talent from within. What we put together at Henry Ford, this is what we call our leadership development model. And I'm not gonna go through the whole thing today. We're really gonna concentrate on that Advanced Leadership Academy and the Physician Leadership Institute that we've put in place. But as you can see, our work in this area started with the Leadership Academy some years ago. We do have a new leader academy. We have a new physician leadership workshop that we've just put in place, MD content. So they all work together. Our physician leaders, uh, something we learned from Cleveland Clinic is that we not only have them involved with our administration side of our leadership academies, but they have their own academies too. So we've put uh, that in so that they really do cross over both ways. So looking at the Advanced Leadership Academy, we'll, let's look at what the uh, contents of that is. First of all, the target audience, again, comes from our succession planning process. And it's really the people that we've identified that within three to five years have the potential to be in our top 25 positions in the organization. The outcomes that we're looking for is that we're really looking to get our senior executives to think and act like a senior executive. And we did identify six other critical competencies I'll talk to you in a moment about that we think are important for our senior leaders on top of those Baldridge competencies that I mentioned. We're looking for that system mindset. How do we really get our leaders to not think simply in the silos of their business units, but how do we get them to look at a system perspective on everything we do? Certainly leading innovation, very important to us, and able to inspire followership. Ship, ship. Easy for me to say. Um, and we do one cohort biannually. So we've, we've, we've completed one full cohort of our Advanced Leadership Academy, and we're partway through our second. The assessments that we're using are strength finders, and we're also doing a 360 on those critical executive competencies. Important part, almost 80% of this program is taught by our internal leaders, so our senior leaders. Every one of our 30 plus um, performance council members, including 
Nancy Schlichting, Bob Reine, et cetera, all teach and mentor in this program and all take a part in the program. We do use some selected external uh, content experts. Uh, specifically, we partner with Gallup, especially on the area of strength finders. And we also partner outside. You're gonna see in a second, we do a lot of work uh, around influencing skills, so we do use some expert content there. And then we have internal development coaches. There are seven of us that actually uh, take four or five of these um, academy participants and go through a very detailed in, um, individual development plan for each one of them. The content, again, if you look at the competencies that we're using, the second column on here, and that we're focusing on in this program, system thinking, accountability for results, innovation, knowledge of the market, community representation, and business acumen. And you can see that it's 10 full day courses and the areas where we concentrate and the, and the full day sessions. I will tell you one of our favorite is around community and surprising how many of our mid-level leaders really have not spent a lot of time out in the community. And if you know anything about Henry Ford, and especially if you look at our Baldrige submission, community is very, very important to us in the work we're doing in Midtown. So when we've taken, Bob Riney, actually we get a bus and we put all the participants on a bus and they spend a day out in our community and really see some of the things that our senior leadership uh, do as far as community work. We also actually have them have a project in, in that area, so a very important area. And then there's 10 full days, but interest session includes system action learning projects. For a matter of fact, we're going through our Baldrige implementation too. It sounds like there's a common theme in the room. Uh, we've made all of the system action projects for this academy focused on Baldrige and really that implementation and make sure that those action learnings are things that we actually implement. I mentioned the individual development plans and the uh, putting those together in execution. We have a mentoring program, so every one of these participants can be assigned and will be assigned to a senior leader member, uh, mentor. We have them meet with a Gallup coach on strength finders, and as I mentioned, the representation in the community. So how do we measure the value of the program and, and whether we feel it's successful or not? First of all, we look at the retention rates of these leaders. Right now we're at 83% retention rate for the graduating class that we have. We've lost three, two to promotions, one opened her own business, but the good news is one of those three is already coming back and will be back, so we, don't, we never lose our uh, alumni and keep track of that alumni, so we're glad to see her come back. Our promotion rates, over 59%, of these participants have been promoted. For a matter of fact, 55% were promoted before they graduated. And we're also looking very closely at our promotion rates for all of our leaders. Four years ago, three years ago for a matter of fact, we only filled 30% of our positions with internal leaders. We are currently at 55% and we're targeting 70%. So we really feel the right mix. You certainly need external thought process and new thoughts coming in, but what's the right mix for that? And, and we have decided that we're trying to target 70% internal, 30% um, external. Efficiencies, our costs contained through leveraging our senior executives as faculty. As, as I said, for a matter of fact, not taking that senior executive time into consideration, I believe this program costs us about $2,800 per leader to run this program. Uh, and our participation's perceived values, 4.6 on a five-point scale. Also, our employee engagement levels. I saw uh, one of the uh, previous pre presenters talking about that. We, we do, again, partner with Gallup on our employee engagement. Three years ago, four years ago, we were at the 25th percentile. This year, we were at the 81st percentile. And when we look at these leaders, the leaders in our Advanced Leadership Academy, you can see how much better they do in each of the items as you look at, they're in the light in the blue versus the red for all leaders. So I've done a really good job as far as how they engage their employees. So let's turn to the physician leadership uh, institute that we've put in. And this is something that we've really partnered three of our physician leaders, Mark Kelly, who's our CEO, for the medical group, Marwan Abelju, who is supposed to be with us today. He's my third partner here that you don't see. Uh, Marwan uh, is the head of transplant for us, and Henry Lim, who's both the head of dermatology and of academic affairs. 
they have really owned this program and totally collaborated with us to put this Physician Leadership Institute together. For a matter of fact, uh, they spent time with Lori and I going out and benchmarking and really looking at some of the best programs um, that are out there right now. What are our objectives? First, we want to expose current and emerging physician leaders to basic management skills. Um, provide mentoring opportunities. So we've put a mentoring program in for all these physician leaders. This is our second cohort. We just graduated our second yesterday, for a matter of fact. Uh, 12 physician leaders, the first one, and 15 this time. So all of them have mentors as they go through the program and continuing. Uh, present physician-focused lecture topics. Business planning, really, really important. And what we've done is take these leaders, we've let them come up with ideas as far as business plans, and then we put them in teams of about four people, five people in each team, and have them go through a business planning process. And actually, as I said yesterday, our second cohort presented those business plans to the three uh, physician leaders and, and others within our organization. And then develop strong leadership competencies using emotional intelligence. We found that this is really important for us to take these physician leaders through an assessment and really get them to understand um, their emotional intelligence in this area. We looked at a number of competencies um, and, and said which ones of these are important using the data from many, many organizations. Uh, some of the competencies, they fall into 10 categories, but everything from business operations, financial management, business planning, project and group management, ethics and regulatory compliance, service line management, listening and communication skills for coaching, managing disruptive behavior, leadership situational styles, healthcare economics, and influencing were the things that we thought were really important. So if you look at our curriculum for our PLI, it's six full sessions. The topics start with leadership, professionalism, management skills, quality and safety, leading teams, and then the graduation projects, mentoring. We did throughout uh, work through the emotional intelligence uh, and had them go through an assessment and then went through two to three hours of individual coaching. And then we went through mentoring on business planning in each of the sessions. Interesting enough, you can see some of the management skills at the, at the side that we've gone through on that day three, they can make choices. We are now moving quite a bit of those management school, uh, skills, those basic skills to what we call a new leader um, institute for, for physicians. And then we've really added more in this area of influencing. And, and trying to um, really strengthen in that area. And you might say, why? Uh, as I said, we do a lot around Gallup. For those of you who have read any of uh, their leadership books, they really put leadership into four domains, execution, influencing, relationship building, and strategic thinking. This is really a combination of all of our leaders who have uh, taken that assessment. And I find it really interesting, and, and, and maybe intuitive to all of you, but for me coming from outside healthcare, I really didn't expect this. What was interesting to us, or to me, is the fact that physician leaders came in very high. This is their top five strengths. So looking at top five strengths, physician leaders came in very high in strategic thinking. I don't know why, but I would have thought it would have been execution. But strategic thinking, where our senior leaders, our administrative leaders, came in very high in execution, but when you get into the middle, certainly next followed by relationship building, and then influencing is that area that everyone within our organization continues to struggle. And as you think about these large healthcare systems and think about how you need to integrate service lines, et cetera, this whole idea of influencing skills are really important. So we have really put a great concentration in that area, not only in the Physician Leadership Institute, but in our Advanced Leadership Academy. What do we think are differentiators uh, in this program? Sir, for, first of all, physician as, as teachers. Uh, again, one of the things we learned from um, our, our benchmarking and certainly from Cleveland Clinic is that certainly you need administrators and, and um, people that are good at facilitation, but you really need physician leaders teaching these courses. And it makes all the difference in the world. Uh, Henry Ford Medical Group, business plan projects, 
These projects are projects that are being implemented, very well done, and really uh, we see that as a return on our investment because we are implementing what they're putting together. Uh, integrated into our talent management strategies and our succession pipeline, so for a matter of fact, this year for the first time, we do a succession plans for all of our chairs and all of our departments. Uh, so that's been included in our succession planning. I've talked about emotional intelligence and this whole idea of influencer and change management. How do physicians really lead people who they do not directly control? How do they really make changes across the medical group? And again, how do we measure value? Our physician leadership positions are being filled at about 66% internally. So getting close at 70% that we're working on. And our PLI promotions are right there too. Our efficiencies and cost effectiveness achieved uh, by having our physician leaders again as the faculty. Our participant perception of value on this program is about 4.7 on a five point scale. So very high perceived value and our physician engagement. This is an area, again, where we really had a satisfaction survey, but we really did not have a physician engagement survey until just recently. And we partnered on this with the advisory board and went through their physician engagement. Our first year, we're at the 60th percentile in engagement. 43% of our physicians engaged, 38.1 content, and only about 5.8 disengaged, which we thought was really good in our first, our first uh, move on that. And more importantly, as you look at what some of those drivers are for physicians, one of the main drivers, and we did very well on it, is the area of physician leadership and the interest. It's, it's been very amazing to us how many of our physicians are interested in leadership and how much the programs that we're putting in place really make a difference uh, with our 36.3% strongly agreeing. I've got two minutes left and I'll open it up to questions. Yes. Talk a little bit about your mentoring program. Do all the physician leaders have mentors? Uh, how are the mentors selected? What do you find them? Are they doc mentors? Or are they, mentors? they are physicians. What we've really done is gone out to our physician leaders and asked who was interested. And we looked at a number of competencies that we felt that the um, physicians in our institutes were interested in, things like business planning. How do you run an operations, things that they don't normally do? And we've asked for those sort of mentors. And as the physicians in the institutes have asked for them, um, we, have, we have assigned them to a mentor. So all of our mentors at this point for our physicians are physicians. How long have you had that program? About a year and a half. And so far, very, very well received. And just the opportunity. I think the big thing in this Physician Leadership Institute as we were walking out of graduation yesterday was the fact that they started getting to know each other. We're obviously a very large health system with a lot of different departments. And when they started that course, almost nobody of those 15 physicians knew each other at all. So they've really developed those relationships. Yes, this program right now is for the Henry Ford Medical Group. We are looking and talking to our community physicians about expanding that and actually doing it in half day sessions on Saturdays for our private practice physicians. For your team, yes, for our leadership team, we have mentors. For our administrative leaders, same thing. We really have, to, and we have a mentoring course that both for the physician leaders and for our administrative leaders that they do go through a three hour course on how to be a mentor. And then our mentees also go through an online course that we have, certainly get some training and putting some things in place before they do it. Yes? Um, it's been a private experience. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, it's been very interesting. Some of the physicians, very honestly, came, came through with the emotional intelligence very, very strong. But some of it's been a real eye-open experience for them. And for those who, who have had some shock in, in the results, uh, we really have, again, worked with them, given them a coach if they wanted to, to really help them through some. It's interesting. I do a lot of coaching in that uh, development program. And one of our physician leaders, uh, one of the women said, she, she walked away and she said, I didn't know I wasn't fun. And you know, she said, I didn't know that was part of my job, 
was to be fun. And, and, and it didn't take much for that to change. And a few things that we thought of really changed that perception pretty quickly. She's a great person. And she just never, when she came in, never thought that. They were so busy with what they were doing that she didn't think about all those little things that maybe are important. So th I think it's been a real good realization for a lot of them. Thank you. Thank you. Zero. Thank you. Zero.